British over the years can take credit for many great achievements, London, but the top of the list, I think, is, of course, the creation of Australia, yeah? Yeah? yeah. And Australia, in turn, has given us the brilliant talent that we should now all thank Captain Cook for. Give it up for Sarah Kendall! <laughs> This, this is love. I love the fact that they've actually installed a bar here for me to work behind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Halfway through my set, the jokes are dying. Just get hey, what can I get you? <laughs> uh, so <laughs> so I, I made a few resolutions uh, this year. Uh, the first one was that I decided uh, I'm going to do an adult education course. It's very exciting. It's one that I saw advertised on cable television, so I think it's a good one. <laughs> it's, uh, it's one of those ones, you know, where the graduates talk about the course in the commercial? Uh, seriously, one of the graduates actually said, you know, the way I felt when I completed my creative writing course was just... indescribable. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she's done a very good course. You know, I, think, I think they've got to screen these people a little more carefully. You know, now I've finished my astrology degree, who knows what my future holds? <laughs> For that one round of applaud. <laughs> Let's go. None of you joined in on that. He, he gave it like two claps and then just went, oh dear Christ. <laughs> oh, I like that. No tenacity whatsoever. <laughs> I, uh, I also I decided to quit smoking uh, and, and not so much for, for health reasons. I just looked a bit crap when I smoke. Uh, you know, I think the only people who really look good when they smoke are Italians. Italians look fantastic, don't they? You know, they've got that beautiful language and they're. <laughs> Australians don't look like that when we smoke. You know, we're more like, <laughs> Shane, get your fucking caravan out of my job, why? <laughs> I, uh, oh, I've got an impression. I, I only do one impression in my set. You want to see my impression? Yeah, that's almost all of you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, here's my impression of, uh, of Nicole Kidman. Okay. <clears throat> don't get too excited, incidentally, but you know, okay. So, Nicole Kidman, okay. a bit childish, really. I, um, I, I'm going to tell you a story now, uh, and then it's bedtime. Because um, people often ask comedians, you know, what, what's the worst gig you ever had? And uh, the worst gig that I ever had was in a place called Leeds. Uh, <laughs> and that's the end of the story. <laughs> it, it, was, it, was a really, it was a really rough gig. Um, uh, there, were, there were 400 people in, and, and they just hated us, you know. Like, and me and the other comedians were in this, like, sort of backstage area, and each time sent a performer on stage. It was kind of like a scene out of a World War I movie. <laughs> you know, sort of sending a soldier off into no man's land. You know, we sort of be backstage going, I don't want to go on stage, I can't go on stage, you've got to go on stage, I can't do this. Yeah, just go and tell some jokes. Okay, I'm going to go and tell some jokes. Hi, hey, everybody, how's it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we would drag their corpse off stage. <laughs> And I went out on stage, and these people, I mean, they hated me, like, seriously. Have, have any of you guys ever been so embarrassed that you've actually considered pretending to faint? <laughs> yeah. When you just get to that point, you just go, fuck this, I'm losing consciousness. <laughs> and, you know, they, they were really hating me and booing. Someone actually threw their shoe. Um, <laughs> and that, that's angry. That's very angry. It's actually, oh, boo! Oh, God! <laughs> It's the kind of anger that you're going to hope sustains itself for the walk home. <laughs> and everyone's hating me, and I just had this, I had this thing, I'm going to pretend to faint. And then I realised, pretending to faint, you, you're going to hurt your head. It's a long way to fall. Right. So what I thought I would do is, I thought I'd, I'd keep on, you know, doing my jokes and stuff, but as I did it, I would just gradually ease myself <laughs> down onto it, and then topple the other half. Right, see, thus, you know, protecting myself from a terrible head injury. So I'm thinking, right, this, this is going to work, this is going to be great. So I start to kind of do this. And at about this level, I completely lose confidence in my plan, right? <laughs> so I just shot back up again. <laughs> and I don't know why, but they hated me more. <laughs> it was like, oh, you and your fucked knees! <laughs> This guy 
heckled, right? And generally speaking, heckling is quite friendly. People are just getting excited taking part in the show. Not this guy. This guy stands up right up the back and he screams at the top of his voice, if you don't shut the fuck up. <laughs> and that's a bad start to a sentence. <laughs> Whatever's coming next, it's not going to be good. <laughs> no one's ever finished that with, I'm going to buy you a car. <laughs> he said, if you don't shut the fuck up, I'm going to come up there and fuck you in the ass. <laughs> and... In a situation like that is, is that there is that part of you that thinks quite clearly, you know, and, and that part of me really wanted to say, look, I'll admit things have not gone very well here tonight. <laughs> I don't see how you coming up here. <laughs> and fucking me in the ass. <laughs> is gonna fix that. <laughs> Yeah, but I did, and I completely panicked. I got that hit of adrenaline, and my response to this guy was, Oh, yeah! <laughs> I said, well, why don't you come up here and do it? <laughs> the guy rushed the stage. <laughs> and the thing that pisses me off to this day is that people were moving their chairs. <laughs> right up the back of the venue, right? He now had a problem. He'd, he, he was up the back and he had 400 people to get through to get to the stage. So he'd gone, I'm gonna come in there, I'm gonna fuck you in the ass. Right! I'm sorry, excuse me, pardon me. I'm sorry, can I just get To the audience, through the crowd. And it gets to the point, he's about from me to the third row away. And at this point, I'm thinking, this is actually going to happen. <laughs> so, you know, I pick up the microphone stand, which is not a good day at work. <laughs> yeah. If someone says to you, what did you do at work today? Oh, I just looked for a blunt instrument. <laughs> to fend off the rapist. <laughs> Tuck there. Um, my theory at the time was that I would poke him in the eyeball, <laughs> thereby visually disabling the creature. <laughs> I know that doesn't make any sense. I, at the very best, maybe I could have poked out one eye. <laughs> right, that would have left him with two-dimensional vision. I'm not a specialist on this, but I imagine you could still have anal sex <laughs> with two-dimensional vision. <laughs> yeah, there must have been gay pirates. <laughs> Yeah. And as the guy made his way right up to the front of the stage, God bless him, this bouncer just grabbed the guy, ripped his arm up behind his back, threw him down onto the ground, at which point everybody booed. <laughs> yeah, 400 people going, Whoa! <laughs> And as the guy was ejected from the venue, he was just screaming at the top of his voice, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> So my point is <laughs> that you guys have been awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sarah Kendall. Hey, hey. Well, that's all from us at Edinburgh Beyond. Please put your hands together again for all the action you've seen tonight. See you again. Cheers!